In this lecture, we'll continue our study of Galois extensions following section 14.2 of Dominant Foot. And we're going to do something a little bit unusual here. What I want to do is start with the statement of theorem nine. So this says, let G consist of sigma one, which will be the identity automorphism, and then sigma two up through sigma n. And that will be a subgroup of automorphisms of a field K. And let's let F be the fixed field of G. So it's the subfield of K consisting of uh, all of the elements of K that are fixed by every automorphism in G. Then the degree of the extension K over F is the size of this group of automorphisms. So is N is the size of G. And the proof of this result is a little bit involved. It's one of the most complicated things in our section on Galois theory. So we're going to skip it for now. And we're going to prove a bunch of things using this theorem. And then we'll come back and talk about the proof uh, two lectures from now, not in the next lecture, but in the one after. All right, so let's start. Uh, let's start by proving corollary 10 of this theorem, which says, let K over F be a finite extension. Then the order of the group of automorphisms of K fixing F divides the degree of K over F. So in particular, the way this is stated in dominant foot is actually just that the order of this group of automorphisms is less than or equal to the degree of K over F, but saying that it divides the degree is a little better. So I want to state it that way. Okay. so. Uh, this is a result that we talked about a little bit when we first focused on the case where we had a splitting field E of a polynomial in F bracket X. We talked about the, the size of the group of automorphisms of E fixing F uh, compared to the degree of E over F. So here, K over F is any finite extension. Okay, so that's the first part. And you may ask, well, when does equality hold here? And we'll show that the equality holds that the order of this group of automorphisms of K fixing F is equal to the degree of K over F if and only if F is the fixed field of this group of automorphisms. So that is this notation that um, is used consistently throughout Conrad's notes is that uh, K ought K over F is F. Okay. And what we'll deduce from this, remember, our definition for a finite extension K over F to be Galois is that the order of the group of automorphisms of K fixing F is equal to the degree of K over F. So what we're seeing is that K over F is Galois if and only if the uh, fixed field of the group of automorphisms of K fixing F is F itself. All right, so let's prove this. Well, we have this group of automorphisms of K fixing F. We know this is a finite uh, subgroup of the group of automorphisms of K. And it has some fixed field. We can take the subfield of K that consists of all the elements that are fixed by everything in this group of automorphisms. Certainly, every automorphism in ought K over F fixes F. It's part of the definition of what it means to be an automorphism of K fixing F. You have to fix F. But maybe there are other things, like maybe there's some larger field where everything in that larger field is fixed by every automorphism of K fixing F. Maybe if you fix F, you automatically fix some bigger field. Well, okay, so let's name F1 to be the fixed field of ought K over F. So we know that F1 is a subfield of K that contains F. And now we're going to apply theorem nine. So F1 is the fixed field of a finite group of automorphisms of a field K. So what do we know by theorem nine? The degree of K over F1 is equal to the order of this group, the order of ought K over F. And now, well, what is the degree of K over F? It's the product of the degree of K over F1 and the degree of F1 over F. So if we just write that down, what we see is that the degree of K over F 
is equal to the order of this group of automorphisms of K fixing F times the degree of F1 over F. So what are we seeing? We're seeing that the size of this group of automorphisms always divides the degree of K over F and equality holds if and only if F1 is equal to F, if the fixed field of ought K over F is F itself. Okay, so this characterization, this is now another way to understand what it means for a finite extension to be Galois. So I'm gonna pause and erase, and we're gonna state and prove another corollary of this theorem nine. We'll now state and prove corollary 11, which says, let G be a finite subgroup of automorphisms of a field K, and let F be the fixed field of G. Then every automorphism of K fixing F is in G. That is, G is actually equal to the group of automorphisms of K fixing F, and K over F is Galois, so the Galois group of K over F is G. Okay, so what's the idea here? F is fixed by all of the elements of G by definition, right? F is the fixed field of G, so it's fixed by everything in G. So G is a subgroup of the group of automorphisms of K fixing F. We know that every element of G is an automorphism of K fixing F, but we don't know, maybe there are some more automorphisms of K fixing F. And one important thing about G being a subgroup of this group is that the size of G is at most this size of ought K over F. So here is the question now. G is contained in this group of automorphisms, but are there any other automorphisms of K fixing F than the ones that are already in G? And the answer is going to be no. And we're gonna see this by counting. So theorem nine tells us we have a finite subgroup of automorphisms of a field K and we have its fixed field. So the degree of K over F is the size of this group of automorphisms, so the size of G. And in corollary 10, what we just proved is that the group ought K over F has size bounded by the degree of K over F. So this is what we just proved. And now we know that this degree of K over F is the size of G. So where are we? Well, we know that the size of G is at most the size of ought K over F because G is a subgroup of this group. And we know the size of G is the degree of K over F. So we have degree of K over F, it's the same as the size of G, is at most the size of ought K over F. And that's at most the degree of K over F. But now what we're seeing is degree of K over F less than or equal to something, less than or equal to degree of K over F, but these two numbers are the same. So we have to have that this thing sandwiched in the middle is equal to both of these. There's equality throughout. In fact, these numbers, degree of K over F, size of ought K over F, degree of K over F, these are all the same number. So what does that mean? That means that the order of the group of automorphisms of K fixing F is the size of G, which is the degree of K over F. So G is a subgroup of ought K over F, if these two things have the same size, then in fact, G is equal to ought K over F. And this is what we were trying to prove. So because ought K over F, the order is equal to the degree, this extension is Galois. So ought K over F, which is equal to G, is the Galois group of K over F. So I'll pause and erase, and we'll state and prove one more corollary of this theorem nine. Let's state and prove the final corollary of this video. If G1 and G2 are distinct finite subgroups of the group of automorphisms of the field K, then their fixed fields are distinct. So if G1 is not equal to G2, then the fixed field of G1 is not equal to the fixed field of G2. The subfield of K consisting of all of the elements that are fixed by all the automorphisms in G1 is not the same as the subfield of uh, K consisting of all the elements of K fixed by uh, every automorphism in G2. Okay, so 
let's name these fixed fields. So let's say F1 is a fixed field of G1, F2 is a fixed field of G2. So if these are equal, then by how we've defined them, F1 is fixed by every element of G2, right? If the fixed field of G1 is the fixed field of G2, then it is fixed by everything in G2. But by corollary 11 that we just proved, the group of automorphisms of K fixing uh, the fixed field of G1 is just G1. Every automorphism of K fixing F1 is already in G1. There are no other automorphisms of K fixing F1 other than the ones in this group G1 that F1 is the fixed field of. So what does that mean? Well, if F1 is fixed by all of the elements in G2, all of these automorphisms of K, then since every automorphism of K fixing F1 is already in G1, everything in G2 is contained in G1. But now we'll just do the same argument with F1 and F2 reversed, right? So F2 is fixed by every element of G1. We know that ought K over F2 is equal to G2. And that's gonna show that G1 is contained in G2. So we have containment each way and we show that G1 is equal to G2. So what have we proven? If these two fixed fields are the same, then G1 and G2 are the same. So if G1 and G2 are distinct, then the fixed fields are distinct. 